Why is it so hard to purchase a home right now? If you've been asking yourself that question, you are not the only one. And this is not only impacting first time home buyers, but current homeowners as well. It's extremely difficult for anybody to buy a home right now. So on today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down all the numbers to show you exactly why this is happening and why the housing market in the United States is so messed up and what caused it to get that way. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so for today's episode, we're going to break it down into two parts. So first, we're gonna talk about the challenges that first time home buyers are facing right now. And then we're gonna talk about challenges that current homeowners are facing right now when it comes to purchasing a home. And hint, it has everything to do with interest rates. So let's go ahead and show you some actual numbers so you can see how big of a difference it's actually making with all of these wild fluctuations in interest rates that we've had over the last four years. So first, we're gonna start with those first time home buyers. So to make things easy, I put everything in this graph right down here to kind of show you your purchasing power based on what interest rates are. Now this graph is basically saying that you're trying to keep your payment at $5,000, which doesn't include insurance as well as taxes, just to make things easy. And we're assuming that you're going to put 20% down. And I know for first time home buyers, that's usually not the case, but to make this as easy as possible in terms of comparing apples to apples, so we don't have to talk about private mortgage insurance and things like that, we're going to just assume today that you're putting 20% down, trying to keep your payment at $5,000, which is just going to be that principal and interest and not your insurance and taxes. So if you take a look at this right here, right now interest rates are hovering right around 7%. So if you were trying to keep that $5,000 monthly payment, you can currently afford a home that's about $940,000. And then you can go up and down the scale and really see how big of a difference it actually makes when interest rates budge just a little bit. And I talk about interest rates on this channel and I make it a big deal when interest rates drop by maybe half a percent and you can see why every time interest rates drop by about a percent your purchasing power trying to keep your payments the same goes up by about a hundred thousand dollars now this is important because especially if you live in Orange County you probably know there are a lot of cities in Orange County that you can't even get into a move-in ready single-family home for nine hundred and forty thousand dollars however for instance in the city I live in your Belinda if you go down to 5.5 percent interest rates and you get to that $1.1 million mark, then you're starting to get into those homes that you might be able to do a little bit of work on, but they're mostly move-in ready and you can go and not to do any major renovations at least right away. And that's how big of a difference that 1.5% interest rate makes when you're looking at 5.5% interest rate versus 7%. It's really the difference of someone being able to get into a home they can afford and not right now. And then the other unfortunate thing to look at in terms of how big of a difference interest rates make is how much you're actually paying in interest over that 30 year mortgage. So if you go back to that example of a 7% interest rate purchasing a $940,000 home, over the life of that loan, you're going to end up spending $1,050,000 over that 30 year span. However, if you got that interest rate of 5.5, you're gonna only end up spending about $785,000, which is basically a savings of a little over $260,000 by having that lower interest rate. So when interest rates drop even just a little bit, not only are you able to afford a better type of home, you're also gonna be spending a lot less money over the life of that loan because of the way interest works as well. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna go over, which I really don't even wanna get into because I know it's going to be depressing and discouraging for a lot of those people that didn't purchase homes over the last couple years, but I want you to take a look at the difference between purchasing a home now versus purchasing a home back, let's say three and a half years ago when interest rates were hovering around the 3% range. So again, let's say you're trying to keep that $5,000 a month payment and you were purchasing a home three and a half years ago at a 3% interest rate you can afford a home that was almost $1.5 million. So you can see that because we had this artificially low interest rate for a few years, it really messed up the housing market because people purchased homes like crazy, even if they were paying over asking price for it, because those interest rates were so low, they were able to afford a much better home than you can today, which is why we're seeing demand significantly decrease over the last year and a half as interest rates have popped from 3% up to 7% and that's keeping demand much lower than it should be. Now you would think demand is low, that means supply has to go up and you should start seeing home prices go down, right? 
Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. And one of the biggest reasons we're seeing that is because supply is also extremely low due to the same interest rate issue that we've seen over the last couple years. So this brings us to the second part of this conversation that has to do with current homeowners and why it's also a big problem that has everything to do with interest rates. So let's go ahead and say that you did purchase a home back three and a half years ago when interest rates were 3% and you bought a $940,000 home. Your mortgage payment, again, 20% down, not including your insurance as well as your taxes, would only be about $3,170. Now, let's go ahead and assume over the last three and a half years, we've had 25% appreciation in the housing market. In Orange County, that's definitely a very conservative number. It is much higher than that, but let's just go ahead and use that as an example. So that $940,000 home over the last couple years, that home is now worth $1.175 million. Now let's go ahead and say that same homeowner wants to purchase a similar home, maybe across the city in a different area. They're looking at a home that's $1.175 million. Their current home is worth $1.175 million. To be able to get into that home at a 7% interest rate, which is today's rate, you would be going from that $3,170 payment all the way up to basically double that, $6,253. So to get into the same type of home right now, you would be doubling your mortgage payment just to do that. Now let's go ahead and take it one step further and assume that if you are looking for a new home, there's probably a reason why maybe you outgrew your first one, you had a kid, everything's starting to feel a little cramped, you want another extra bedroom, maybe a pool, you wanna upgrade a little bit. Now, if you're trying to buy a home that's even more expensive than what your current home is worth, you'd be easily way more than doubling your current mortgage payment just to get into a home that's maybe a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars more than what your current home is worth. So unless the seller has a very good reason to move out of that home, there are a lot of sellers that are just choosing to stay put. Maybe they're going to redo their home a little bit, maybe even add an extra bedroom to their existing home because the cost would be so much more beneficial to be able to do it up front keep that low mortgage and continue living where they are. So because of that, not only has demand stayed low, but supply has also stayed extremely low as well. Now we are seeing a slight uptick this year compared to last year, which is good news. It means the housing market isn't quite as hot as it was last year. It's starting to slow down a little bit. However, because interest rates are so high right now, demand is going to stay muted. Supply is going to stay muted. And so you really can't expect any major shifts both up or down in the housing market it when we have such low supply and demand. There are going to be a lot less transactions happening in the marketplace right now, but just because there's less transactions doesn't mean home prices are going up or down. It just means there's less people buying and selling homes right now. So is there an easy fix to all these negative impacts we've seen in the housing market because of those low artificial rates we had a few years ago? Not really. Even if interest rates slowly drop, you're going to have a lot more buyer demand coming in the marketplace, and you're also going to have a lot more sellers more willing to sell their property as interest rates drop as well. So it's predicted that both the demand and supply are going to remain relatively stable compared to each other. So again, don't expect to see any major shifts in the housing market because as interest rates drop, more sellers wanna sell, more buyers wanna purchase, and it keeps prices relatively stable. Which unfortunately means for people that wanna purchase purchase a home, especially those first time home buyers, there's no easy fix in sight for you. Unfortunately, you're going to have to continue saving, continue renting while you can, try to save that money. So when interest rates do drop enough to make it more affordable for you to purchase a home, although you'll probably be dealing with a lot more competition, at least you'll have that down payment ready to go. Financially, you'll be qualified to purchase a home and then it becomes finding the right home, placing competitive offers and getting into a home after interest rates drop. And then there's also programs out there that do help with down payment. There's also ways where you can have the seller buy down your interest rate for you so it's no money out of your pocket and get you a lower interest rate when you purchase a home. So there's a few things you can do to try to get around some of these higher interest rates and some of the unaffordability. But at the end of the day, should you purchase a house right now, it's all going to depend on your financial situation. The best recommendation I always give to anybody even thinking about buying a home in the next 12 months is sit down with a trusted lender, have them run your financial information, figure out where you are right now, where you need to be to be in a position to purchase a home and then come up with a plan to get there. 
If you're already there, great. Then you have the financial ability to purchase a home. The next thing you wanna think about is how long you plan on staying in that home because ideally you wanna make sure any home that you purchase, you can see yourself living in for at least five years up to 10 years. So that way there's a lot less risk for you purchasing a home. If you try to buy a home and plan to move two years later, you're going to be a lot more susceptible and there's a higher risk for you because of any type of market fluctuations. So if you can financially do it, you can get into a home based on the payments that you're comfortable with in the neighborhood that you want and you plan on being there for a while, it's definitely an option I would consider exploring because when interest rates do drop and you have a lot more buyers in the market, there's going to be more competition and there's a good chance that prices are gonna continue going up. And if you've been thinking of purchasing a home and you're watching this on YouTube and you wanna have some more strategies in your tool belt to help you get into a home in a competitive market, check out this video right here because I go over the top five things that you can do in today's housing market to get your offer accepted that have nothing to do with the price. So I hope you found this information useful and until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye everybody.